Hi everyone, this is Ted from Blades and Blasters, and I'm coming to you with another Kickstarter edition uh, video for us. And uh, today we're going to be talking about When the Wolf Comes, the role-playing game, uh, by Ian Sharp. And this is a game that uses uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord, one of our favorite rule sets here on Blades and Blasters. And let's uh, talk about what I know about the, uh, the game so far. Um, it's been on Kickstarter for like a week or so. Um, and uh, it's already funded and they're hitting their stretch goals now and uh, as you can see by the um, the graphic here that I'm showing it's a uh, it has a, a Nordic feel to it um, obviously uh, you can see the Nordic runes there in the name and uh, Viking verse is the the universe that it is in um, and you can see there's a comic book style for the art and that is the way it is all the way through because I believe this game is based on uh, a few comics that have come out um, so uh, yeah it's it seems very interesting and you know working with Shadow the Demon Lord is just uh, is a great great choice I like to kind of just scroll down the page in case you haven't seen it right so there's a mock-up of the book looks really nice um, and I'll just keep scrolling down so you can see the art here uh, just to get started um, it is kind of um, from what I can tell a um, you know a campaign setting that is um, you know um, sort of uh, sci fantasy um, you can see that there's some uh, high-tech equipment here this guy has a gun uh, that a sort of thing so it's not just like uh, you know Nordic uh, fantasy sort of thing it's very unique in that in that regard which is pretty neat um, and then there's some excerpts from the book looks like and so on more art very nice the demon lord Yep, and then they've already hit two stretch goals, and uh, hopefully they will hit more. Uh, so, yeah. All right, uh, and then you have your uh, your goals, right? I I've pledged to this already. I think I I think I really was the first one, um, right? So, uh, I get my, the physical the physical book and the PDF. Uh, Thirty four people have picked that. I always look and see like what did I miss, right? Um, you know, fifty fifty here. So they get a lot of stuff. Maybe I'll change my pledge to that, actually, now that I'm looking. Um, so, oh, that's actually less than mine. <laughs> so maybe not. Um, yeah, I would look at this. Uh, anyway, uh, those are the rewards. And we're going to get into this a little deeper. Uh, I have the pleasure to talk to Ian here, and uh, he had sent me some uh, information that I can relay to you uh, a little bit more in detail about this uh, this Kickstarter, and uh, we can go from there. So what I would like to talk about is some of the races of this game, and you can see uh, here something very different. For, I, here, here, I want to back up. I love games that are unique, right? Unique games that do something different than other games, right? Um, I find this Kickstarter unique for a couple reasons. Number one, you have this comic book style um, that is really coming through very strongly, which is which is quite unusual for for uh, games. Uh, I feel they don't usually have this sort of style, especially just you know um, you know non non like typical comic book uh, themes like you know superheroes and stuff like that. But you definitely have that theme in the art here, which is really neat. Um, obviously, you have this um, you have this Nordic flair, uh, right? Which is it by itself all that unusual um, or um, or unique? But with this kind of sci fantasy, um, which you don't see, right? It's completely unique, and I think that makes it very, very, very interesting. And it uses Shadow of the Demon Lord, which is just a great system. So let me talk about um, these uh, these races, okay? So this one, and um, this one I believe is the, uh, boy, you know, my pronunciation of, of Norse is not great, right? So I'm just going to call them the Children of the Ironwood, which I believe is, um, you know, uh, appropriate. They have, a, they have a, um, a Scandinavian name too, but these are animals that are given sentience and turned into beasts of war. So you're talking about, uh, you know, a animal that is given 
you know, sentience and probably made into um, something that will just fight for other people. Um, so it's a very interesting concept, I feel. Um, you know, so if you're thinking of uh, popular, um, you know, popular things that this could relate to, you're talking about like something like Rocket Raccoon from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy or something along those lines. It's kind of a cool concept, I think. Um, yeah, I think that uh, that's a neat thing that you can play. So the next thing we have are um, Dvergar. Um, so there are sentient machines, uh, and they are raised from the bones of worlds and fortune to crafty and cunning thralls. So they are uh, sentient machines, uh, and as you can see here, it uh, looks like they have a whole bunch of weapons hanging off their back, and they're ready to go. Um, and you see the kind of the um, the definitely machine um, concept there uh, on its chassis, its legs. Uh, that sort of thing. So, a sentient machine that uh, that should be familiar with Shadow of the Demon Lord players, uh, similar to a Clockwork, probably, uh, and uh, pretty pretty cool. So the next thing is the Scions of. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. These are the Sons of Vivaldi, uh, and they're um, they they appear to be something of a sort of kind of uh, artificer um, sort of character uh, archetype. And they, um, you know, they pursue immortality by uploading their consciousness into custom-built bodies. So we're talking about some transhuman, you know, humanism in there, uh, which uh, transhumanity is an interesting concept. You usually see it in sci-fi games such as Eclipse Phase and, and other games like that, you know, Altered Carbon, that sort of thing. But now you have it in kind of this, this interesting uh, sci-fantasy Norse setting, which is really... Another thing that's really unique about this, I think, um, and uh, I think it's uh, it's something that would be interesting to play for sure. Um, just the, all these all these things are very very unique. I feel, and I think that that really lets this game stand out other over other games. Perhaps um, you know you have you have a, like a Norse theme, uh, and not is it just Norse Norse his, you know it's not Norse historical or Norse fantasy in by itself, but it has all these other flavors um, of you know high science in it. So you have this sci fantasy sort of sort of setting with a Norse backdrop, which is you know incredibly unique. And another one is the. Um, I believe these are called the Alfar, and they look like they're part plant, uh, part tree. Uh, they're the scions of Yggdrasil, uh, and her bark is uh, bark and bow uh, made flesh and marrow. So here you have a um, you know a tree people essentially. I'm gonna very simplifying it um, for everyone, but yeah, you have sort of a um, a, a plant. Um, being here, and they look like they. Uh, this is really cool. Their staff is uh, mushrooms and and uh, stuff like that. Uh, it looks like it has mushrooms around the bark. It's pretty cool. Um, it's a pretty cool, interesting thing. There are uh, there are creatures like this in other uh, other fantasy settings, but you know, uh, I'm sure that this has its own thing, right? You know, it has its own callback to you know Norse mythology and that sort of thing with a drassel. And uh, it looks looks really cool to look at, obviously. And uh, yeah, it would be interesting to see how all these play. You know, their differences, uh, stats wise, and uh, and their abilities and such. And, and Shadow of the Demon Lord, but but very cool. So that was a bit of a sneak peek um, of things that you uh, might not be able to see on the Kickstarter page. And uh, I want to go through, let's go through um, what you get. Okay, let's go through the rewards. Um, okay, let's just ignore mine for now. Uh, so you have the follow, right? Uh, everyone does that, um, or people do that to upgrade their uh, rewards later on. Uh, so the first is you get the game as a PDF, and you get all digital stretch goals, it looks like. Um, so that's that's uh, for 25 Canadian, uh, about 20 US dollars. Um, the next is uh, your 50 Canadian, $39. Uh, you get the P you get a lot of digital uh, stuff here. You get, uh, you know, the game, uh, the All Father Paradox, Loki's Wager, 
and Old Norse of Modern Times and the Jotan War, all as PDFs, I believe ebooks and PDFs. So you're talking about I believe these are these are basically um what you're basically the comic books, um the graphic novels, um so you get all those as well, uh as the game and then you get all the digital stretch goals. Uh, then, then I believe the next one is the one I have done here. So you get the print hardcover, and then you get all the all the stretch goals as well. Um, and then uh, the next one is uh, sixty two dollars uh, eighty Canadian. Um, so you get basically uh, you get um, the game in PDF, the game in print, and all digital stretch goals. Uh, okay. And then you get uh, this is the 150, so you get like everything here in hardcover, okay. And then you get all digital stretch goals too. And then you get the big one. This is 200 Canadian, about 155 US. Uh, you get your face included in the artwork and an upcoming adventure. So uh, then you get uh, the game is in print and PDF, and then all digital stretch goals. And then there's one even bigger one. Uh, so that includes. It looks like it includes the last one, and then the big one. You get everything in hardcover. Okay. So and then all the eBooks and yeah. So that's that's the the top one. Uh, that you can get and yeah so there's a lot of content in here that you get for um, pretty cheap so um, yeah looks good to me looks like very interesting setting here's kind of some of those uh, images that I had shown earlier put together um, and I suggest to go to this Kickstarter and just look it over yourself and see what you like. And if, you, especially if you're a Shadow of the Demon Lord fan, um, it's already they're already hitting their stretch goals. There's like um, two over two weeks left. Yeah, 16 days left. So plenty of time to hit all these stretch goals. Uh, anything from uh, Robert Schwab, you know, uh, even in relation to him, is usually really a great game. Uh, Shadow of the Demon Lord, great game. And, uh, you know, this looks very, very interesting, different from what you might see in other places and uh, very unique setting, I think. Uh, shipping and fulfillment looks like uh, it's going to be uh, U.S. and from China for uh, international. Um, so, yeah, and uh, shipping's charged after in, in the pledge manager, which is um, good. And I can tell you from experience, it's it's really just so that to keep the shipping uh, costs correct for you. Um, so uh, you should appreciate uh, people who do that uh, because it's going to help uh, keep shipping as uh, low as possible. It also keeps uh, the creator from uh, taking a loss on shipping, which we don't want anybody to do. Um, so yeah, I, I really suggest you come and check out uh, When the Wolf Comes role-playing game. Uh, and I will post a link for it in the description of this video. Uh, please go ahead and take a look. And uh, hopefully uh, you will find what you like in this game and uh, back it. Uh, thanks so much. I'll see you guys later.